Hi, I'm Mike. And today on the ranch, we are gonna deal with bulk feed. We're gonna get it unloaded, we're gonna get it fed, and we're gonna show you the entire process along the way and show you the cost savings that buying feed this way makes for the ranch. It's all coming up today on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back and thanks for continuing to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. If this is your first time here, please subscribe and be sure to hit that little bell button so you get notifications when new videos are released. You can also check us out online at ourwyomonglife.com. So I really hope that you enjoyed yesterday's episode where we got a chance to head over to Dakota Mills and buy our grain. We also got a chance to look around and see what exactly goes into a grain elevator and what comes out the other side in the mill. They kind of work together in that aspect. Before we get into today's episode and what we have going on, I thought I'd catch you up on a few things that are happening here around the channel. And the big one this week is that we will not have a live stream on Sunday on the Beyond the Ranch channel. Instead, we're going to do it on Saturday night at 7 p.m. So a little change of schedule there. Uh, we've got something going on on Sunday, so we wanted to make sure we still got to do the live stream since we didn't do it last weekend due to Grace's birthday. So that will be Saturday on the Beyond the Ranch channel at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Another thing, even if you don't come to the live streams, another thing that you're going to want to know about is the fact that last Monday we did our Monday morning meetup, and that was a live stream here on Our Wyoming Life, and we talked about uh, the upcoming Ranch Roundup, which happens the first weekend in September over Labor Day weekend. That's where we invite people to come to the ranch, hang out, and basically uh, see, you know, just get a chance to, to mingle around, hang out with the animals, meet Aaron and I, meet other subscribers, moderators, all kinds of cool, fun stuff. We're actually going to do a live stream in front of a live audience and we even have a chance to go down and uh, take a, a little tour of the ranch and uh, and have a picnic on the ranch as well that's coming up uh, like i said on labor day weekend but we have a lot to do to prepare for that couple days so in order to do that we are actually going to take next week off we talked about it in last monday's meetup and we kind of gave you guys a choice on uh, whether or not you wanted us to drop back and maybe just do a couple videos per week or if it was okay if we took the entire week off. And of course, everybody was very much, uh, pretty much in favor of, of taking the week off and then coming back the following week uh, and continuing with the daily vlogs up until Labor Day weekend. Then we're going to go back to our regular schedule, which is just two videos per week, but that's still on the way. So the basic gist of it is that this weekend live stream will be Saturday night, 7 p.m. Mountain Time on the Beyond the Ranch channel. Then we're going to take next week off. We will be back uh, the following week on Monday, which would be what? The 17th, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I think that's what it is. And, and then we'll be uh, back and rolling into the daily vlogs up until the ranch roundup. So that's kind of the plan for the next couple weeks here on the ranch. For today, we have a plan as well. And that plan includes unloading all of the grain and the feed that we bought yesterday over in Belfouche, South Dakota, at Dakota Mills and Grain. So the, the trick is they're gonna be getting the stuff off of, our, off of our trailer because as you noticed, we loaded it up onto a dump trailer, uh, which means that we had to push each pallet on farther and farther. We're gonna have to figure out how to get those off. The back one's not gonna be any problem, but we're gonna figure out how to get the other ones off also, we have to figure out how we're going to feed this stuff. And I've got a cool tool um, that hopefully, I haven't used it before, but we're going to give it a try, will make that job uh, just a little bit easier for us. Lots of questions uh, over, over uh, the video, though, when we went and picked up the grain on the cost savings and how that will actually affect the ranch. And if you've known in the past, if you've been paying attention, we've bought a lot of bagged feed. Now, that was actually more convenient for us at the time because we could actually get that locally and not have to spend you know a whole day heading over to Belfouche picking up feed coming back and and doing it in bulk like that but really we've come down to seeing you know with with the economy the way it is with COVID and everything else that's happening every dollar every every penny really uh, makes a difference in the uh, in the bottom line on the ranch so we're really trying to uh, you know spread our wings and, and try some new things and one of those new things is buying feed in bulk and yesterday you got to come along for one of our very first forays into that uh, into that world uh, the cost savings actually might surprise you, and we're going to take a look at those. I've got them right here under my hat. Uh, so this is my actual ticket uh, from um, Dakota Mill and Grain. 
that I got yesterday after purchasing uh, the, the three tons of feed that we got. So what I can do is I can actually break it down for you uh, by, by which type of feed that we got. So we got a ton of cake, um, that's gonna go out to the cows. We got a ton of pig grower, uh, which will go to the pigs, and then a, t a ton of chicken food that's gonna obviously go to the chickens. Uh, what I did also to give us a really good comparison on, on what we're saving by buying feed in bulk, like we are here, um, is I called Tractor Supply this morning, and I got prices for almost exactly what we have out there. I couldn't get it exactly dead on just because the mixtures and stuff like that, but basically by going by what we would have been buying anyway. So we'd be buying cake, we'd be buying pig feed uh, and pig grower, and we'd be buying chicken feed. So layer pellets is what we usually get. So what I was able to do is break that down and kind of show uh, the cost savings that we have uh, between just buying it in bulk and buying it by the bag at uh, Tractor Supply. So cake, we paid $319 for that one ton of cake. We also paid $20 for the bag, so you do have to buy the bag. You can reuse those, so as long as you don't ruin them, you can take them back, they can refill them for you, they just put your name on it. So they are completely reusable and recyclable, so that's a one-time fee, but we're gonna roll that in just to kind of make things fair for today. So a total of $339 for that ton of cake from Dakota Mill and Grain. That same ton of cake from Tractor Supply would have been $11.99 for a 50-pound bag, for a total of $479. So basically on cake, we saved $140 by, by buying it from them. We're gonna take a look at fuel costs a little bit later, but uh, really all I had was probably about 50 or $60 in fuel. Um, I think I actually put in 50, 50 bucks worth of gas uh, on the entire trip. So uh, that kind of you know gives you an idea of what we're looking at there. Uh, the pig feed. Uh, which uh, we paid $232 at Dakota, uh, with, and then you roll in that, that bag for 20 bucks, so say 252. Uh, that same pig feed, pig grower, we could have bought from Tractor Supply for $15.29 for a 50 pound bag for a total of $611. Uh, so that saves us $359 on the same amount of feed from uh, from Tractor Supply, that's insane. That's a, that's a huge savings for the ranch. And the chicken feed, two hundred and thirty-two dollars there, uh, two hundred and fifty-two with the bag from Dakota Mill and Grain. Uh, the the lay pellets that that we would get from Tractor Supply. $13.49 a bag, so for a total of $5.39.60, savings of $287. So our total bill uh, from Dakota Mill and Grain, uh, minus tax, I guess, was $843. That same amount of feed purchased uh, minus tax from uh, Tractor Supply would have been $1,630.20, a difference of $787, almost 50% savings by going and doing this in bulk. So this is something that I think uh, will definitely benefit the ranch in the long run, as long as we can keep doing it. And, and Dakota Mill and Grain is located in Belfouche and, and it's still two hours away, like I said, a little bit of fuel cost. But um, really, once you start looking at the numbers, it's kind of a, a no brainer. It's like, why didn't we do this a long time ago? Um, really, if you're looking at um, even the, the price on cake, so we said 319, 339 with the bag, 479, at Tractor Supply, so we're paying an extra $3.50 per bag uh, for bagging, for uh, somebody to put it in the bag, for the, for the, for the uh, paper that the bag is, is made of, um, all that kind of good stuff, so, and shipping cost, of course. So that's, it's a big deal, uh, three, extra $3.50 uh, per 50 pounds, that adds up really, really fast. So uh, again, thanks to Dakota Milling Grain for allowing us to uh, come in and film there yesterday. I think it was a pretty educational episode for most folks. Um, today, I have a feeling that it's going to start out relatively easy. We're going to we're going to jump in the in the skid steer. We're going to move that back um, that back ton of feed, whatever it may be. I'm not even sure. We'll take a look and see what we've got there. We're going to move that one off. We're going to get that one put away. I think that's going to be the easiest part. I think what's going to happen here today is we are progressively our day is going to keep on getting harder and harder. So there's really uh, only so much procrastinating we can do sitting here talking about numbers and stuff like that. But eventually, we just have to get to work. And it's not really a cool day out here. The breeze, we do have quite a breeze going today and I think there's a storm on the way, maybe. Um, but uh, so it's not a bad idea to get this stuff off of here, but it's hot and, uh, and it's muggy. So 
something, uh, two things we're not really used to here in, in Northeast Wyoming. But here is our, here's our bags of feed. This one really did end up leaning over. I'm kind of a, uh, a little bit scared that one might flop over on us. Uh, we'll find out once we take it off and hopefully we don't have any issues, but we are going to get these bags off of here. What am I tied up onto? Well, that was smart. I tied it to the bag. Um, we're going to get these bags off here. We're going to see what we're dealing with and then uh, figure out how we're going to get this fed. One of these do need to go uh, to the pigs right away. They're actually out of food, so uh, they will be very happy to get some and uh, I'll be happy to feed it to them. All right, let's jump up here and see what we've got here in this first bin. I do believe that is our chicken food. I just wanna make sure that I get the right feed. To the right animal. Oh no, this is chicken feed. This has lay pellets in it. So the second one is actually our chicken feed. First one there, this is for pigs. Awesome. With the gates open, we can now grab the skid steer and uh, we're gonna start getting this stuff off of here. you who have not yet gotten to drive the skid steer, I'll give you the quick lesson here. Um, basically, pretty much just push buttons. So we press the start button. And away we go. The one biggest trick that everybody forgets is you have to unlock everything before you go anywhere. The lever over here. This is how you steer, back and forth, forward, backwards. On your right side, that one controls your forks or your bucket or whatever you have on the front. For us, it's forks because we're gonna be picking up these pallets that the feed is on. And hopefully not dropping anything. Rather than uh, take this ton, this chicken food, and put it in the shop, I actually have some place very special that I'm going to stash it away over here by the chicken house uh, where we can feed it and it'll be close by, we won't have to be packing it all over the place. And I actually have a pretty cool uh, chicken feeder that I designed a few years ago 
and I'll show you as well that uh, this feed will be going into. So just take us a second to get over there. One thing that absolutely amazes me is that I've been making videos for over three years now and nobody has ever asked me about this semi trailer that sits over here by the chicken house. I know people have seen it in videos, you had to have, but nobody's ever asked me about it. And this is an old semi box uh, trailer, obviously no running gear on it. Uh, it's had some sort of uh, uh, collision. You can see a big old dent up here in the front of it. Don't ask me what from, something slammed around inside or something happened, but either way, made it the right price for us. And in here, uh, we basically use this thing for storage. In here is just a little bit of everything, but uh, I figure it's a good, good as place as any to keep this chicken feed out of the weather. And uh, dry also close by to the chicken house so that uh, we can feed it right from here. You can see there's just a bunch of junk in here. There's some old net wrap or new net wrap actually that uh, eventually we'll end up using. A bunch of tomato cages, some old furniture, shelves down there at the end. Just random, random junk. But uh, for now, it's gonna become a storage area for this bag of chicken food. And here comes the boss. Hi. It's a little windy. So I'm gonna stash the chicken food in here so we can grab buckets of it. And then I was just getting ready to show everybody my super cool chicken feeder. The little chicks. Okay, well, we'll get everybody fed. Let me get the stuff taken off the trailer first. Okay. 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 Or if you get a bucket, I'll do it. Do you have a bucket? Well, I got lots of buckets. There's one up by your mom's yard that blew over there the other day. Yeah, I'll go get that. Okay, thank you. All right, so this is uh, the chicken feeder. It's kind of my own design, but basically, and I, I think I'm gonna make another one, so we'll probably make a video on how to make it. It's really simple, though. Uh, I took a metal wash tub here, cut it down, drilled some holes in it, put all thread through it, and then took a garbage can, cut out the bottom of the garbage can, uh, ran the all thread through the garbage can to hold it in place, and then all you have to do is just fill it up with chicken food. Right now, it's got lay pellets in it. And then it's like an automatic dispensing chicken feeder. We'll, we'll, we'll make another one. I should make another one anyway. So, all right, so let's get this put away. And then uh, we have one more ton of the ton of cake that we still have to get off of that trailer. That's gonna be a little tricky. We'll figure out how to do that. But for right now, let's get this put away in here. While you're doing that, I'm gonna go get that cake off the trailer somehow. Back over here at the trailer, we have a little bit of an issue, and that is that we have a bag of cake all the way at the front of the trailer, and a skid steer all the way at the back. And no way to reach. So uh, we're gonna get a little creative here and, and take a lesson from Archimedes, I guess. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get a chain around that pallet so that we can pull it straight back.
you know what? I'm gonna count this as a win. Of course, we're only halfway through. We've got them off the trailer, but now what do we do? Well, we have to figure out how we're gonna feed this to cows and how we're gonna get this to the pigs. For that, we're gonna try using a brand new tool. But I don't know if it's really a tool or not, I guess. It's what's called a fled bag easy. Not sure why it's fled bag, but okay. It's foreign, I'm not even sure where it comes from. I don't know what language that is. Austria, there we go. It's from Austria. And basically what this does is each one of these bags has a port, for <laughs> to say, on the bottom. That you can lift these up, you can open that port up on the bottom, everything's gonna drain right out. Quick way to fill up any type of bin or anything like that if you can get these bags up high enough. And that's one of the problems that we have with our big pig feeder is that we don't have a tractor with enough lift to be able to get one of these big bags up high enough. So that's where this is gonna come in handy. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna modify a pallet so that that port comes through the bottom of a pallet. This thing goes on there and allows us to open this up. Feed comes out close it up, and that stops the flow of feed. That's the plan anyway. Um, we'll see if we can make it work. First things first, <laughs> we need a pallet to start with. And I wanted to pick a pallet that's in pretty good shape. This one looks to be halfway decent. Um, what we're gonna be doing is cutting a hole basically in the middle of this pallet, framing that hole in, um, in order to allow us to get that spout down and through. So. That's what we're starting with. Hey Mike, what did you do today? Well, I made a pallet with a hole in the middle. What a weird life we live. All right, so next up is to uh, start out with the pig food here. And basically we gotta figure out how to lift it up, set it down, and make sure that everything lines up. To make this happen, there's really only way I, one way I can think of, and that's we're gonna have to lift up this bag, slide the old pallet out, put our new pallet in, and then we're gonna have to figure out how to do this by ourselves, but get everything lined up and set it back down. Tricky, but not impossible. So here's that nozzle that we were talking about. Uh, just a hole in the bottom of the bag. So we gotta get this to sit down inside of our donut. This might not be that hard. Right down there from the bottom, there's our spigot. So we got it pretty well centered. This thing's a little precarious. Can't say I love the idea. I guess our next step is to head back 
to the pigs. I can't say I really love this. It's a little wonky, but it'll work, I hope. One of the more nerve-wracking things I've done in a long time. Um, basically, all I have to do is get it untied, and it should flow right in. This one, we don't have to use our gate, um, our little valve deal, because we're just letting it all go in. Looks like Erin's gonna go ahead and put this whole thing back together for us. While she does that, we're gonna figure out how we're gonna handle cake and, uh, and how that's gonna work. For cake, we pretty much do the same thing, except for we don't have to take it to the pig pen, which is nice. And we don't even have to chase pigs today because Erin's taking care of it. That'll make a lot of people feel better. All right, so we need to grab the cake here by the straps, just like we did the other one. Take our donut pallet again. In place it goes. So you open up that part, you bring in this. Okay, long story short is this thing is not gonna pick up itself. So I've gotta figure out how to, how to do this. So um, I think we'll go back to chains and the skid steer here. And try to, try to lift it back up. See if we can pull it back up, maybe using these two straps and a chain and see if we can pull it up.
right, so we can't pick it up without tearing the bag. We still have our nozzle on this end, so we can't, if, we, if that comes off, it's all gonna fall out this end. Now it's coming out this end. So, I'm trying to figure out what to do here. I've got a whole bunch of cake that's about ready to be just spilled all over the ground. All right. To get this thing off, I'm gonna have to cut <laughs> my nice new donut pallet, which is actually already broken, you can see. So we're gonna cut through that, we're gonna get that end thing off, we're gonna try to close that end up. There we go. It's kind of like removing an accident victim from a car with the jaws of life, you know what I'm saying? There we go. All right. Okay, so we got this thing off. And out. I'm gonna lose some cake there, but that's not the end of the world. Okay. Okay, lost a little bit, but not much. All right, I'm gonna tie this off. This bag's torn up and ruined anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie this off. What to do, what to do. Now, maybe we could come in with the bucket of the tractor and try to scoop it up and see if I can get to those handles. Maybe. Okay, now, we have access to all four straps. So my hope is, get the chain around, all four straps, and around the forks, and lift it back up into a vertical type position. Okay, we're somewhat upright. I'm gonna take the chain off. And then we're gonna try to get through the actual loops with the forks, lift it up, give it a little shake, kind of balance things out, and then I'm gonna put it on another pallet, a different pallet, because this one's destroyed.
Well, look at that. We're right back where we started. I gotta say, this is not how I saw today's video going. Honestly, the ending would have been lifting this thing up, using that cool little lever thing, filling up the back of the gator with the cake and going down and caking the cows. Instead, of the end of the video, instead, the end of the video is gonna be me uh, sweeping up cake and going and apologizing to Aaron, who apparently I ticked off somewhere along the line because I was annoyed and told her I didn't need her help. You work by yourself so much and you get used to it. And uh, sometimes when you have help, you don't know how to handle it. So I'm gonna go eat crow. In the meantime, remember, Saturday, 7 p.m., live stream. No videos next week. We're going to take the week off. We're going to get ready for Ranch Roundup, which is coming September 4th, 5th, and 6th, Labor Day weekend. You can come hang out on the ranch. You can hang out with Aaron and I, and I promise I won't drop a bag of cake. It wasn't a total failure of a day, though. We did get the pigs fed, and the pigs are in. Aaron got that done, so not a total waste of a day, but a long day. To, uh, to say the least. Be sure to subscribe, follow along as we continue to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary, trying things new, learning our way around different ideas. I can tell you that uh, I probably am now thinking about some sort of gantry crane type thing to lift these up, putting the nozzle on it, and then being able to fill up the back of the gator that way. Uh, probably be a lot simpler and a lot safer too. So anyway, thanks once again for hanging out with me. And we'll see you next time, which will be on August 17th, right here on our Wyoming Life.